Hello everyone and welcome to today's Facebook and Instagram Live. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not actually live with you guys today, but I want to do a video for you guys because as many of you know, yesterday, Sunday the 22nd was my birthday. And I really, first of all, want to take a moment to say thank you so much to all of you guys who donated um, who got the email blast and donated from our, you know, to our website to just bless me with donations for my birthday. You don't know how much it means to me. You know, when people say they love you, I always say, you know, love comes with action. Love comes with a sacrifice. And that's what we do here at the ministry as well. Because if we love somebody, we want to go the extra mile for them. So thank you for all you guys who truly do love me and who really went the extra mile to be able to bless me with, uh, you know, financially. It just means the world to me. So I so honor that. Um, also, let me say this to you guys today, and that is the fact that, happy Monday, I'm going to talk to you guys about, for a couple of minutes, something that God spoke to me about um, earlier today in my prayer time that has really meant a lot to me, and that is uh, finding your place. Now, let me say this to you guys. The book of the month this month was actually the book that's called, Why Are Things Not Working For Me? As you guys know. However, I feel like that we're, we're near towards the end of the month, and God just spoke to me really strong and said, I want you to talk about people finding themselves in this season, because here we are in January in the first of you know the new year, 2023, and you want to be able to find where you are, find who you are, find where you belong. And that's one of the things I want to bring to you guys today for a couple of minutes, and that's coming from uh, this combo set I did a while back called Finding Your Place. You have a great, good-sized book with this, and then you have Where Are You? Powerful study guide, and then the other workbook, which is called Finding Your Place in a World Around You. Now, these, uh, Pamela will put up the link here for us, and these actually are can only be purchased in a combo, a study guide, workbook, and a book, because I wanted to be able to target something for people to be able to find themselves in this season. And sometimes people say, you know, well, you know, we are hidden in Christ, or I know where I live. I live in Michigan. That's where I belong. We're not talking about a geographical located place. We're talking about in the spirit realm, knowing where you are, who you are, what you have to offer, and what it is you are here to receive. Very important. So it's not just about, you know, hey, here I, here I am. It's also about what you know you're giving and what you know you should be receiving. And that's equally the same, uh, you know, leveraging those out to know what you're putting out and what you need to receive. Because if not, you're going to receive anything from, as the old saying is, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You're right coming your way because of the fact you want to be able to, you know, just receive, receive, receive. But you need to know what you're supposed to be receiving. And so it's very important. So I'm going to talk to you guys a day a little bit about this and I'm really highly encourage each one of you click on the link finding your place combo or you can go to the website as you know identitynetwork.net and you can also just put in finding your place combo forwards finding your place combo and it'll pull it up automatically you can download these three books as PDF files in like in seconds or you can order these three from the website as paperbacks and I can I can be glad to autograph them for you since I'll be home this afternoon, Monday afternoon, from my retreat that I'm doing this past weekend, because I wanted to be able to get away from my birthday and just refresh myself, find, center myself and find myself and be able to spend time with the Lord. So with that said, let's talk a couple minutes about some things about finding yourself. One of the things I like to reflect on is this, is visualizing what kind of perfect lifestyle you're looking for. Now, when I say that, people say, well, that sounds like a just more hocus pocus of what I want. No, it's not. You've got to begin to visualize certain aspects of where you feel as if you belong and what type of lifestyle, and that way you can see which one fits you, which one's carrying out fruit with it, which one is taking you from glory to glory, which means if as you visualize a vision, if it's not the right vision, you'll, you'll stop it right there. You won't see yourself progressing further into that vision, right? If it's God's vision, you'll find yourself where, you know, this will lead you to that and this will lead you to something else. And you'll find yourself sort of visualizing in the sense of God's vision taking you further and deeper, right? Because it's here to bear forth fruit. And so it's going to take you, take you deeper to bear forth more fruit and more fruit. So what you're seeing is either what you're going to become in your becoming process or what you're seeing will stop right there and you won't become it. You'll just see it in your being moment and not see a progressiveness of it, right? Another point I want to bring to you about finding yourself is something very important. And I'll do a teaching on this even to add uh, to it a little bit more down the road. And that is uh, learning to reflect on your relationships. Finding yourself 
is a is a part of the reflection process of yourself in the mirror, yourself to yourself, and also the reflections of people. You know, when we think about law of attraction, which is very biblical, and you think of like attracts like. So you're going to attract people into your world that are just like you. Some people say, I got so many, you know, dysfunctional people around me. Well, it's because it's trying to attract, it's, it's attracting from your dysfunctionality in you that maybe you're not aware of, consciously or unconsciously. But you got to remember, you attract things into your life of what you really are inside. And so sometimes it's helpful to say, if I'm if I'm surrounding myself by people that are dysfunctional or users or abusers, what that's doing is it's trying to reflect something within you that you've hidden that God wants you to be able to awaken to, to say, wait a minute, wow, that did happen to me and it altered my ego. It all altered my lifestyle, all to my personality, and never realizing I am that same thing. And so it awakens things in you, right? So you need to reflect on relationships to say, are my relationships healthy? If they're healthy, it's a good relationship, a good reflection on me. Are my, you know, uh, relationships unhealthy? Are they abusive? Are they takers? Are they givers? Are they drainers? Because these type of relationships, you know, um, can alter you into a place of saying, what's wrong with me? You know, or what's wrong with them? Why are they doing this around me? You know, why are they, uh, you know, so draining to me all the time? And then you won't awaken to your own dysfunctionality inside of your heart that is hidden because let's just face it, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And sometimes, most of the time, every one of us has deceived ourselves. And really, we are deceiving ourselves to small, to some small magnitude or a large magnitude, right? So you want to be able to make sure your heart is checked out by seeing the things that is drawn into your life. If not, you'll never let you'll never allow God uh, to awaken the things in your closets that the skeletons in your closets that need to be awakened, right? And so reflect on your relationships. They are a reflection of yourself. And you might not know that consciously, but you need to reflect on that to say, wow, wait a minute. No wonder why I can't find my purpose and find my identity because I'm asleep to the things that need to be healed in me that actually are, the ref are reflecting within all my relationships. Friendships, buddy, pals, friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, you know, because that helps us. And believe it or not, if you're deceived a little bit by not realizing what's what's hidden within inside of you, and you're drawing these these really dysfunctional relationships in your life, it's not uh, condemnation against you by far. It should be a powerful awakening, a purpose to say, "Wow." That is a reflection of me. Let me discover in me so I can deal with it, get rid of it, and awaken to who I really am, right? And so if you find yourself misplaced, it's because a lot of times the relationships outside of you can be a reflection of you, and yet you not realizing it's part of your reflection. And so it'll throw you off. It'll throw you off from not seeing the, the hindrances or the obstacles or the dysfunctionalities that are right in the way covering and smothering your true authentic identity. Think about that. And you want to clear the air, clear the airwaves, clear you, and clear your relationships by allowing them to prophesy to you about what's really in you, Right? And so, and, and so these are key elements. Another thing I want to bring to your attention, I'm not going to keep you too long today because this is a recording, and I want to be able to give you just enough food for thought to order these books or download them. Another thing you want to do is um, when, it, when we say do things by yourself, do things on your own, that's what I mean. Because when you learn to, to do things on your own, to find yourself, and sometimes detach from always feeling as if you've got to be codependent, like I can't go to the movies by myself, I can't go to out to eat by myself. I remember watching uh, Eat, Love, and Pray the other night. You know, there's so many dynamic gold nuggets in so many movies nowadays, but Eat, Love, and Pray, and when, when Julie Roberts, who was the character of Liz Gilbert, who was in Italy, she said, you know what, I'm going to eat by myself, and she enjoyed sitting there, the ambiance, you know, uh, the ambiance of all the glitter and the, you know, and the beauty of, it, of uh, Italy, which I've been in Italy, it is gorgeous, and sitting on that table, you know, sort of taking your fork and sort of turning that, that spaghetti, you know, and she's like, I'm loving me. I'm loving my environment. I'm loving what's going on. And she found joy in that present moment of herself. And sometimes when we do things on our own and we challenge ourselves to do things on our own, we get to know ourselves better, which means we find ourselves better. We might say, well, I don't like this and I don't like this, but I like this. Well, that's great and wonderful, but you're going to shift and change from season to season. And because you are, your taste buds, spiritually and naturally, do change, right? 
And so when that happens, sometimes we can say, well, I just don't like this. Well, if you tried it now, you might end up liking it. You know, uh, you might realize your theology. And let me say this something to you guys. Many of you, if not all of us, have warped theology that fit like the armor yesterday that does not fit us anymore. Well, I've always believed this, brother. Well, why, not, why don't you learn to stop believing that? And by, by being on your own, finding yourself, being your own best friend, spending time with yourself, let's say in the mountains, you know, um, uh, you know, Pamela lives in the mountains. You know, I'm telling on you here, Pamela. You know, the beautiful nature. Sometimes she'll go on a hike. Sometimes many of us will. I love doing meditative walks. I love spending time, you know, whether it's in my hot tub or, or sitting down by the, my, you know, my pond of my, um, of my koi fish or, you know, sitting in my little place of solitude that I have for my meditation and prayer time. It's when I find myself, I awaken to things to say, you know what? God can be able to, Holy Spirit can be able to show you. You need to sort of shed, shed off like, like, a, like, you know, like, like a snake sort of sheds its skin or other animals will, you know, cause we even shed our skin, right? You know, and sort of you'll, you'll have the Holy Spirit to sort of shed off a little bit of that stuff, that theology, maybe that once you thought was dynamic and it doesn't fit you anymore. It's like David's armor. If it doesn't fit anymore, you won't know until you try it on. You won't know until you're alone by yourself to allow your environment to have nothing there that can influence you, but all you have is you versus you with you. Ezekiel says this. Ezekiel says, show us the, ha see, it says, um, show the house to the house, show the form and the fashion thereof. And what that means is God is saying, show this house to this house. You got to learn to see yourself and you can't see yourself until you learn to spend time by yourself and get alone on your own to be able to discover the you that is in your present now reality and not the you that was last year. Well, I've always done this. So I've always done that, but I'm struggling right now. Well, that's your problem. You've, you're, you're still living in what you've always done, what you've always liked, what you've always tasted, what you've always felt was comfortable for, comfortable for you, and that's your problem. And that's why all hell's breaking loose in your life, because you're still living in the comfort and the taste buds of yesterday. But if naturally my skin sheds, if naturally this proven scientifically that the lining of my stomach, actually I get a new lining every couple of years, if it's known that my taste buds will change from decade to decade or year to year, if it's known that my skin will grow and unfortunately sort of shed and, and, and grow and get a little bigger, can I get an amen for everybody? You know, knowing all that stuff, how much more is all of this prophesying to the inside of us that says, I'm in dire need of change and upgrading to this moment, but you're not allowing me to. But while everything else is shifting and changing and evolving, you're not allowing your inner man to evolve into a newness of theology, a newness of maybe new doctrines you need to be able to adhere to and chunk out the other ones. You've got to learn to begin to to surrender and give yourself over to find you, the real you in the now moment and shed everything else that you feel like has been working for you. Well, I won't change this, brother. Well, that's why when all hell breaks loose in your life, it's not going to change for you because you're not willing to change and adapt to a new level God wants to take you to, right? So you're going to have to begin to understand the power to surrender, I'm surrendering to, to new theology, God. I don't care what you show me, God. You know, you know if, it's, if it's contrary, if it's opposite, or if it's flowing with something I believe, I don't care. I don't worship. With, let me tell you something about Jeremy. Jeremy does not worship his theology at all. I don't care. I don't give two hoots about this kind of doctrinal, traditional stuff at all. If God tells me and I see it, you know what? I'm, I, I, I'm, go, I'm running into it because God's word will not return back to him void. It'll wait on me to awaken out of my stubbornness to say, are you going to take me up or are you going to continue to go to spiral down and life gets worse? You get depressed. You know, uh, you get sick. You did get diseased. Uh, you get unhappy. All hell's breaking loose and you're praying and praying and praying. God help me. God help me. And God's like, I can't. There's a stubborn mindset you have. You refuse to surrender and allow the power of, of, of the kingdom to just getting, get you into this ebbing flow of receiving what is now, now being downloaded into you that you're refusing to be downloaded into you, right? And so that's where you have to begin to get on your own, find you, discover you, talk to yourself. 
I mean, you know, I talk to the Lord, I talk to myself. Hey, Jeremy, you know what? Today, you're feeling really good today. Today, you're going to remain healthy. Today, Jeremy, I just love who you are. I love who you're becoming. I, I, you know, I, I talk to myself, right? You know, the old saying is true. Maybe you won't answer yourself, but maybe sometimes your spirit man needs to answer you to say, hey, while you're talking to me, let me share something with you. I've been wanting to share with you. The Holy Spirit's been downloading in me, you know? Uh, and so you you got to learn these techniques. And if you're if you're like me this season, you desperately want to find you and find your purpose. And if you're going to find your purpose, I've got many, many more points I'll do in a teaching soon. But you desperately need to get it. Go ahead and get Finding Your Place Study Guide, Workbook, and Book. It's all in one on the website. And just click, click up one button. You can order them, paperback, or you can download them. But I want to highly encourage you guys to finish these points I'm giving you. You've got to begin to understand and discover what it is you need to find about yourself. Because if you don't find yourself this season, you can bind and loose every devil. You can pray to the cows come home. You can fast. You can plead. You can beg. You can cry like Hannah. And none of it's going to do you any good because God is saying there's a stubbornness of a carnal mind in you. Carnal does not mean, oh, I'm watching pornography. I'm dropping the F-bomb every minute. I, you know, that's not always a carnal mind. A carnal mind, believe it or not, the underlying of carnal mind is refusing to change not adapting to the newness, bringing yourself into a place of comfort and then idolizing your comfort, bringing yourself to a place of, I don't want anybody to change in my life. I don't want anything new. Don't leave my life. Please don't leave my life. You know, sister or brother or Betty or, or Carol or Tom, you know, I don't want people to leave my life. All that is, all that resistance is carnally minded. Carnal mind doesn't mean I'm cussing you out. I got a bad attitude. I'm watching pornography. That's that's the that's some of carnal mind. Carnal mind is a very deadly thing that says I refuse to change. I don't want anything new. I like how I am. I like you know how I how I think. I like my traditions. I like my doctrines. I you know thinking the whole time you're open to the Holy Spirit when really you have a carnal mind, which is God's enemy. Which, and if you and if your carnal mind is God's enemy, then it's then it's hitting and butting heads up against the mind of Christ that is prophesying to you change, and 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 transforming transformational into your being ing futuristic. And so, guess what? God's like, I can't, my hands are tied because you can pray, beg, plead, and and fast, but I can't do anything because your carnal mind is my anti. It's, 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 it's my anti, it is, it is against me. Therefore it is my enemy and God can't, God won't, God won't go against the enemy that is alive and well right here, right? Do you see what I'm saying? So much more we're going to share in a couple of weeks on these points, but I want to encourage you, go get right now, click on the link below or go get it. Finding your place combo. You guys will tear it up in the sense of loving it. And I promise you this word this year, this season everything will begin to finally subside and subdue. And you'll find where open doors will be present. You'll find yourself shifting gracefully, not forcefully, gracefully into these new, these new realms that God has for you. All right. So once again, go to the website, identitynetwork.net or click on the link below and just enter finding your place combo. But get that today. I will be with you guys next week. And I love every one of you. You guys are amazing. Have a wonderful, blessed, powerful day. And by the way, next Wednesday, uh, let me see this date real quick. I know Pamela's going to post this. Next Wednesday, the 25th, January 25th at 6 p.m. Central Time, we will do our other prophetic live event. On, on Instagram and Facebook. You want to be part of that, all right? So write that on your, put on your calendar. If you have an iPhone, Android, put it on your calendar and, and go ahead and mark it for like a, um, a couple of hours uh, notice to where you'll get the notification two hours before I start, all right? I love every one of you. Finding your place combo. Get it now if you want a good season, all right? If you're tired of going through hell, get this series, all right? Love every one of you and I'll see you soon.